I'm Jennifer Baker, and as soon as Erin unmutes, I will introduce her as well. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> Uh, I am a middle school teacher in Bloomington, Illinois, for those of you who have not met me before. Um, and what we want to do today is we really want to explain a little bit about how IAEA can make you a leader in your profession, as well as the opportunity, most specifically, at presenting at the state conference this fall. Um, our conference is amazing because we use people um, that are our members and people in the field who really understand um, what's going on in our education right now to uh, present really amazing PD for our attendees. Sorry, I'm trying to click and do all this at once. Um, so we are going to go through a little PowerPoint here. Um, it has some information in it. So um, one of the things that IAEA is really great for is it's going to like I said, make you a leader in your field. So one of the things is it allows you opportunities for presenting your students' artwork. You, you see here is the poster for the Youth Art Month. Um, this year, uh, we take the winners to the national conference level. You can see the prize winners on the poster. Um, we also have a fall art show. Sorry, I'm stumbling, Erin. Um, an art show at the student or at the conference in the fall. That deadline, unfortunately, has already passed. But if you were a member, you would be getting information about that before the deadline. Um, you can also be published, which I know for my uh, principals and people I've interviewed with, it was a really great thing to be able to say. You know, I was the editor of the Mosaic at one point. There's two wonderful ladies who have taken that off of my plate. Thank you. And um, but it's an opportunity for you to write articles of, about things that you're passionate about and become published, which is a great thing for your resume. We also are really into advocating for our programs and for art in the state of Illinois. Um, these are some images of when we have gone to Capitol visits um, a few years ago. You see you have a legislator signing um, a declaration to support the arts, um, and then uh, several of our members and members of the music uh, association as well going down as a team to advocate for the arts. Uh, Aaron and several of our other board members have also gone to Washington, D.C. to advocate for the arts at a national level. Professional development. One of our biggest professional development opportunities is the weekend every fall where we do the conference this year. It will be November 8th through the 10th at the Marriott in Normal, Illinois. Um, here you see some images of uh, just things that happened last year. Um, but this year at Normal, one of the things that I would like to point out is that if you are not from the uh, central Illinois area, the train station is very close, less than a block away from the location that we're holding it. So if you can uh, have access to the train, you can come in from there. You can walk directly to the hotel. Uh, the hotel provides free Wi-Fi uh, to all of our attendees as well as all of our, the guests there. Another thing is what we're doing currently right now. We are always looking for more individuals to share their expertise in the webinar series. Here I have two uh, just screenshots of two of the uh, pre presentations that are currently loaded for webinars. Um, if you are pre-registered for a webinar and watch it live, you are able to get PD uh, time for that, PD credit. We're also looking for people to present these. Um, you, I'm sure there's a link online that we can look at. Uh, or you could email our president, Teresa McGee, uh, for more information about that. But what we're here for today, um, presenting at our state conference. Um, one of the most important things about presenting at the conference is just realizing that you do this every day. And because you do this every day, you are an expert in the thing that you're doing. So we want more individuals to present the things that they love to do. Um, if there's a lesson that you really like, a community project that you've done, um, anything that you are passionate about is something that we would consider to have in our conference. We have put together a list of things that have specifically been asked for by previous conference attendees. Um, it's a kind of a long list, so I broke it up. It's in alphabetical order. Um, so these are the requested presentation topics. I know I won't read all of them, but what I do is going to point out some of the ones that are the most requested. So uh, AP art, always a huge request. 
um, if you teach AP art, if you are a district leader in AP art, this would be a fantastic idea, uh, opportunity for you to present. Artistic pra practices and assessment are always asked for. I know that assessment is uh, a hot uh, issue currently. Um, so if there's some way that you assess, you do your rubrics, different things that you've come up with, um, that would be fantastic. Classroom management is always something that people are looking for. Developing electronic portfolios, digital toolboxes. Lessons that can be implemented directly into the classroom with some sort of home uh, take home materials. This leads me right into workshops. We do have the opportunity for you to present a workshop, either uh, one hour or two hours. If you wish to present a workshop, the nice thing is you can set the price for that workshop so that you could cover the expenses of the materials. We are able to reimburse you up to the amount of fees collected for the workshop. So for instance, if you have 20 uh, participants who each paid $10, you have $200 available to have uh, materials re or reimbursed. You would just have to provide us with receipts uh, at the time of the conference. Organizational strategies for new teachers. New teachers are always looking for more information. Um, SLOs and student growth, a little bit redundant on my list there, but uh, just those things that, that the state is requiring of us, and so now our districts are as well. Um, last year there was a quite a, uh, a request for TAB, um, and there's always a lot of requests for technology, using iPads or laptops in the art room to create artwork, and anything specific to a media or material. So if there is, uh, if you're a fiber artist, if you're a painter, if you're somebody who has a very specific way of using something that you could show us, that would be a fantastic way to share your knowledge with the field. I'm now going to turn it over to Erin, who's going to lead us through how you actually go on the website and submit a proposal. All right. All right. Hi guys. <laughs> All right. Hang on one second. Share my screen. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So um, thank you so much, Jen, for sharing all that wonderful information and also just highlighting those major key components and topics that people are interested in and wanting more information. And definitely now with AP um, being in high demand and also portfolio reviews, anything digital, of course, is huge. And um, more districts going one-to-one -one device, I know that that's becoming more of a big deal as well. Um, so great list. And any, we've even heard about topics last year um, at our conference talk at the hotel that we were at just more topics that we never even knew about as well. So there's also topics that you might have a lot of knowledge on that we would love to hear about as well. Um, but what I have here up on the screen is our conference tab. It's conference information. So if you go here and you scroll down from programs and events, you can scroll down to state conference, click on it and learn more about the 2018 conference. Um, so as we scroll down here, one second, there's our little webinar series, and then there is a tab here that says, please submit um, a conference proposal. And it says that the deadline right now is May 15th. Um, we have been hearing your voice, and there has been many people that have been reaching out saying, hey, you know, May 15th, it's crazy time of the year. Um, I can't even think about a good dynamic presentation right now, or if you have the idea, but there's just no time to sit down and put it into words or think about it and have it to the May 15 deadline. So we have pushed it back to June 15th, hoping that most of you will be out of school by then and you'll have a little time to digest things and think about some great um, proposals that you would like to submit. Um, so as we're going on here, what you'll do is you'll scroll down and it says, that you agree to the guidelines and of course we would hope that you agree to that and I'm just going to click through as we go down. Um, then your lead presenter. This is always a question as far as how many people can present. Um, there has been ones where maybe it's a few teachers and a couple of their students. There has been um, some presentations where it might be 
you know, up to four or five different teachers uh, presenting together, but you want to have a lead presenter's name on this. So I'll just go ahead and fill mine in there. Um, and then also you want to create a title. And for right now, just for that, I'm just going to write test because just kind of testing and showing you guys everything about it. But you would put, you know, a title of interest. You don't want to just keep it very simple unless it is a very simple title, but something that's going to be intriguing that people are going to want to come to your presentation. Um, so then it also asks the qualifications of the leader or the presenter. And if you're either certified or licensed or highly qualified, so more um, things that you can click on there. Then the lead presenter address and all of that. Don't need to really fill that out. I'll just keep going here. Um, and your email, phone number, all that information. And then if you're going to have a co-presenter or not. Then the proposal title and description. We recommend that you try to keep it at 50 words or less just because in our conference booklet, we don't want to have this huge, all this writing, just to the point. Um, and then also, what is the learning standards of this proposal? Um, and so as you can see here, is it going to be more about leadership? Is it going to be different resources, data, like assessment and data, things like that, implementation, the outcomes? We need to know that um, even from our end as um, conference coordinators, we also need to know these things because when we give the PD out at the end, which targets are we hitting at the conference? So this is all on those sheets that we get when we take PD. Um, and then the next thing that Jen touched upon is, is it going to be a session, 45 minute session where you're going to talk about something that you've done in your classroom, a lesson, how the outcomes are, um, or is it going to be more of a hands on workshop? Is it going to be where you're going to do a printmaking workshop or are you going to do something with painting or mixed media? Um, so, and again, it could be up to an hour to two hour workshop. And then the audience level, and this is always a question as well, is what if I hit across the whole board? What if I do elementary, middle school, and high school? Can I mark all those? Sure. But if, it, if you're more specific to elementary, please mark that off because then you're going to get that audience that you want. You wouldn't want a high school or teacher coming into something that's more specific to elementary. Um, then the category, and again, sometimes people also say, hey, it's going to touch upon this or that, and that's okay if your uh, presentation does um, revolve around these topics or a few topics, that's fine. You can mark that off, but if there is one specific thing, please uh, make sure that you click on that. And then the biggest thing also here at the end, make sure you do mark this off because I did a test proposal yesterday. If you don't mark that off, it will kick back to you. Um, so mark whether or not you did submit student artwork to be considered in the art show. This is big for planning when your workshop or session will be because it's going to be Saturday afternoon in the student show and we don't want to plan your session or workshop when the student show is going on. We want to give that opportunity to someone who might not have students in the student show. Um, so then at the end, once you go through this whole entire page, um, you can then hit submit. And what will happen is you will get an email immediately, like within less than a minute that will kick back and say, thank you for your proposal. And then I get the email. Um, I I'm at conference, or it's actually proposals at um, ILAEA.org, and I will get an email as well, and usually I check it every night, and I will email you back saying I received your email, or I got your proposal. And um, one question here that has come up, it, there, it was something asked about how many proposals can I put in? Um, we are limiting it to two, two proposals per person. Um, and Jen, I believe this is true. I don't know if you can be like a co-presenter, correct? You could be a co-presenter and still be a part of it. Absolutely. You could be a co-presenter and a presenter. Um, I would just hesitate to, to put too many proposals in 
because if you are uh, presenting two and then a co-presenter for two, that's a lot of your time at the conference that you're giving up that you can't go to sessions as well. Yes. So um, it's just, you know, you know what your time is. Um, but yeah, that, that's one question that's come up. There's another question that came up, um, and that is proof of presentation. If you present at the conference, uh, our wonderful president will actually write you a letter that you can show your superintendent, your principal, um, again, something of value to your professional life. Yes, and that's a great thing that you're just talking about because I've had a few people who have told me, hey, um, I can't present or I can't go to the conference unless I am presenting. Can you please give me a letter or something so I can give to my administrator to say, hey, I am presenting and that it's okay that they go. So we will definitely do that for you because we want you to attend and especially if you're presenting, it's like a double whammy and we want you to be there. Another question is when we will find out. You will find out um, in early July uh, if your presentation was accepted and then the time at which it will happen. So you'll have all that information in that letter Aaron just spoke about. So we individually write a letter to each individual. Um, if you are the lead presenter, however, it is your responsibility to pass that information on to your co-presenters. So that they're aware as well of when what time the presentation will be. Okay. Oops, sorry. <laughs> All right, and then there's another question here also about um, the timeline or about being able to select a time um, for your session. Well, we and Jen does more of this end as far as planning and the flow of things as far as, you know, it makes sense to have where you can go to similar sessions across the board. Um, and so Jen does a wonderful job of putting presentations together that makes sense or that you won't miss, you know, a technology one because they're all at the same time. There's like a mixture. So um, you don't really get to pick and choose. I mean, again, if we know a few things ahead of time, that's very helpful, but we, you know, kind of select and put in where it fits best in the conference program. Oh, any anything else you would like to add, Jen, as far as some important things that we can talk about? I think the most important thing that I would like to add is no matter what uh, you feel as if uh, feel like presenting, to just try it. It's not um, it's not as scary as some people think it is. You could present with other people. You can present as a group. Um, you're you could host a, a roundtable or a talk. You could write a proposal that just says. Um, I want to be the moderator for a middle school meetup um, and have individuals from, you know, different middle schools come in and share ideas. So whatever it is that you want to see in the conference, consider being the person that makes that happen this year. Um, and don't be scared. We've all done it. Our first time is always a little hard, but um, after the first time, it's, it's a piece of cake. Right, Erin? Absolutely. Because, and I, and I know I've told Jen this many a times, um, I... I like to be the person behind the scenes sometimes. I don't like to be up in front of people speaking and doing things of that nature. But um, I find myself, I feel very comfortable in workshop settings because it gives me the opportunity to show what I do every day, give the, those tools and techniques to teachers, and then give them the time to experiment and explore. And it allows me not to be up in front of people talking for 45 minutes. Like that makes me a little nervous. And maybe that's the same for you. Maybe you would prefer um, to do a workshop over a session. Or if you want to do a session and talk about something, again, to have that collaboration with a group of teachers, maybe in your own school district, you could do something as a school district together, or um, also if other teachers that might teach at the same level as you as well. All right, I think 
Do you have any more questions? Um, I don't at this time. <laughs> okay. Um, well, what I would like to do is just say thank you very much for, for doing this. Um, and the last thing I want to say is we are always looking for more people to help us with the conference. So if that seems like if you if pre presenting seems a little too scary for you, but you want to help, um, we are always, always, always looking for more people to be on our team and help us with things. Um, you'll have a say in how things run, how uh, some of the choices that we're making. And uh, on the same note, if there's something that you want to see or hear or change in the, in the way the conference runs, please drop us an email at conference at ilaea.org. And if uh, you didn't catch that, you can go to our website, ilaea.org, and just search um, the board members and you'll see our email there. But thank you very much for spending this little bit of time with us on Saturday afternoon. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. All right, thank you both so very much. Um, it was a great um, thing to hear all the details. So again, um, thank you also for extending that uh, deadline to June uh, 15th. That makes it easier on all of us uh, for sure as we get through the end of this year. Art show season's crazy. And uh, just wanna say it was only I think 10 years ago when I did my first presentation at a conference. Like I was like hardly really involved. I came, but I didn't present. And I did it with a friend and it actually made me a better teacher because it forced me to really reflect on what I was doing so I could present it. So uh, that is something to think about as well. So present with a friend, it improves your teaching and um, it really helps you get out there a little bit. And all of a sudden then I'm presenting at national conferences. You just never know where uh, the situation can lead you. So uh, thanks again. And I think we will be signing off for now and because there are no more questions so thank you for those of you who came with us today thank you aaron thank you jen bye